we saw developer shares really showing that market watchers were a little bit surprised by that full elimination. But is it really going to be the sort of cure for, for the woes of, of the real estate sector? Yeah, I think that at this point, uh, the problems within Hong Kong's property market are just still so severe. Now, these are curbs that uh, were introduced in the aftermath of the global financial crisis. The idea was that at the time, interest rates were plunging. They really needed to cool home buyer demand down. But they've existed for so long because that just really hasn't happened. I mean, Hong Kong is still world's least affordable housing market. And so, um, you're, but at the same time, you're still having all of these issues with the uh, home buyer demand now. So ultimately leading to these property uh, curbs to be removed. Obviously, as you mentioned, uh, markets weren't expecting something that was this severe. But at this point, when you've got uh, interest rates as high as they're remaining in Hong Kong right now, it's uh, difficult to see how this uh, leads to ultimately a longer term improvement within the local property market. So I think what a lot of investors are looking out for right now is whether you see sort of any short term gains. I think we have to look to see uh, what happens with, you know, any future property sales that come on the market. But at this point, it's, it's just really not clear that this is going to lead to any sort of long term sustainability within the Hong Kong housing market. How strong is a correlation between whether or not we see a sustained pickup in the Chinese economy? Be it you talk about uh, the malaise across the property sector, tourism, you know, retail slowdown as a result in Hong Kong. Does that is, is that really the crux of when we'll see a recovery for Hong Kong? Yes, I mean, I think you nailed it. At this point, um, you know, this economy is incredibly tied to what's happening within the broader Chinese economy. We saw this during the pandemic in particular. I mean, you know, obviously Hong Kong had a lot of its own issues with sort of isolating itself and the rest of the world during the pandemic, but also uh, the slowdown in growth that we're seeing uh, within China's economy feeds into some of these broader concerns. Right now, uh, Hong Kong is trying to deal with a, a bunch of other headwinds. Uh, uh, tourism in particular is a massive issue. Um, you've seen a big drop off over the last several years. This budget uh, that Hong Kong announced just yesterday did include some measures to sort of have tourism pick up again. Really remains to be seen how much that's going to play into it. But uh, when you've got, um, you know, a, sort of a lack of visitors from mainland China in particular, a major key source of tourism revenue for Hong Kong uh, because of some of these broader issues with uh, China's, you know, eroding wealth within the middle class. I think that it's going to be, you know, kind of difficult for Hong Kong to actually see a meaningful turnaround. We've seen them forecast growth of around 3.2% over the next several years. We'll see whether that comes to fruition in Hong Kong.